the Cold War Games. It was late October 1997 in Moscow. My tour of duty in Russia was winding down. My boss and I just finished dinner at a restaurant positioned just four miles from the Kremlin. After dinner, we sipped vodka and talked about fast-moving sports cars. The car he owned was very sporty. It was a slick, silver American model. He left it at home in the USA because it was much, much too costly to bring it into Russia. Moreover, he was afraid to have it stolen. Stolen, like many other fine Western cars, owned by many other Westerners, spending time building factories, refurbishing warehouses, furnishing distribution centers, buying delivery trucks, installing computers, configuring software, counting Russian rubles, counting Czech crowns, counting Polish slotties, counting Hungarian forests, wherever the former Soviet Union abode, there we were with all our technical toys playing round after round of business roulette, deluded into thinking that the Cold War games were over. <laughs> train ride from Brewster to New York City. <laughs> on the train again, my playlist shuffle stuck on a song recently downloaded as I ride. Riding to New York City again to hear poets read their best at another outstanding poetry event. And I ride. I look out the window as my train rapidly propels down the track, surfing the steel crest as I ride. Pack the poor man's lunch in my crumpled leather sack. Sweet, dried cranberries, apple juice, and garlicky flatbread. And I ride. I munch as we sail. I study a piece prepared for tonight's open mic as I ride. We pull into Grand Central, elation consumes each chord, each thread, and I feel as I arrive. Walked into the venue, poets already sounding sweet words on stage. I toss my hat, I hang my coat, I order my mouth back, I take my seat, and I ride. Yeah.